Hello everyone. So in my previous video, I have discussed about the succinyl choline, its introduction and its mechanism of action. Just in this video, I uh, will be quickly recap of the previous one and then I will be taking the therapeutic uses and adverse effect of the succinyl choline. So succinyl choline, it is a peripheral acting skeletal muscle relaxant. It acts by blocking the neuromuscular junction. So it is also called neuromuscular blocking agent because it is going to depolarize the neuromuscular junction. So it is also called a depolarizing blocker. Another name for succinyl choline is a succamethonium. It is a quaternary ammonium compound and it is formed by joining the 2-acetylcholine molecule. Now how it acts? So this I have taken it illustration from the Cadzin. So how it acts? So this is a normal uh, physiology of the skeletal muscle contraction. You can see the neuromuscular junction. So what will happen initially there will be impulse generation. With that impulse generation what will happen? There will be generation of action potential. Once this generation of action potential will happen then what will happen? There is a small amount of the calcium influx happens and then this vesicles which stores this acetylcholine it come and fuse with this membrane and there will be release of this acetylcholine and this acetylcholine it is further going to act on the acetylcholine receptor which is NM type of receptor it is ion channeling receptor once the acetylcholine it binds with this receptor what will happen there is influx of the sodium ion and this sodium ion it is going to cause end plate potential so depolarization of the end plate leads to end plate potential and this end plate potential it is going to generate the muscle action potential and that leads to the muscle contraction and now what happens to this acetylcholine it is hydrolyzed by this acetylcholine esterase so acetylcholine here important is it comes it binds and it unbinds now muscle is again repolarized it is again ready for the next impulse now how the succinylcholine it acts succinylcholine it also act in a same way just like acetylcholine it binds with the receptor here instead of acetylcholine or succinylcholine it will come and bind with the receptor this illustration i have taken it from the lipin cot so succinylcholine it binds with the receptor once the succinylcholine it binds with the receptor then what will hap happen the here also it is going to cause the depolarization of the membrane by the action potential is generated there will be influx of the sodium then what will happen the membrane gets depolarized now important is now here once the succinylcholine it binds here it is going to bind here only it will not unbind because now it is not hydrolyzed by acetylcholinesterase enzyme. So it will remain over here. So this leads to persistent depolarization. So there is no repolarization. Now because no repolarization, now this is receptor is unresponsive to acetylcholine with the next impulse now if acetylcholine if it is coming now because of no repolarization it is not responsive to the ACH or acetylcholine will be unable to bind now if it is not able to bind then what will happen it won't be able to generate end plate potential no muscle action potential and no contraction. So ultimately leads to flaccid paralysis. So always remember for next depolarization this repolarization that is must. So this phase 1 block it is followed by the phase 2. So an, another illustration this also I have taken from the lipin cord. Now membrane it is repolarized now though it is repolarized but now acetylcholine still it is not able to bind here. Why? Because succinylcholine because of the continuous exposure of the receptor to the succinylcholine 
this gets desensitized. The receptor gets desensitized further. So acetylcholine won't be able to bind. So there will be no end plate potential, no muscle action potential and this leads to flaccid paralysis just like the paralysis we get with the detuberculin or competitive blocker or non-depolarizing blocker. So this was about the mechanism of action of the succinyl choline. So here important is which you must remember succinyl choline it is a number one is quaternary ammonium compound. So we cannot give it by oral route. Always give IV route. Okay. Number two, it is metabolized very fast by pseudocholinesterase. In the liver and plasma. Then at the motor and plate, its action is terminated by diffusions. Now because it is metabolized fast, so remember one thing, it is fast acting neuromuscular blocking agent with a short duration of action. Now fast acting, it is going to act within one minute and duration of action is 5 to 10 minutes. So coming to the therapeutic uses, why I have told this, that means this is used, succinylcholine, it is used for the procedure which are of short duration like 5 to 10 minutes. Now where we can use the succinyl choline? So number one is it is used in endoscope, diagnostic endoscopy sorry. So like laryngoscopy, you laryngoscopy maybe kar sakte ho and you can do it, use it in a bronchoscopy. So as an adjunct with the general anesthetic, it is used for the endotracheal intubation. So, we will be getting the perfect condition for the endotracheal intubation with the succinylcholine. It is a short acting. So, what you will be getting, the jaw will be relaxed. Vocal cord apart. and immobile, no diaphragmatic movements, this is what you want when you are going to put the tube. So, relaxation will be achieved within 1 to 1.5 minutes, I mean, one to minute, but if you are taking a long time, you can give a continuous IV infusion. So, this is number 2. Then another one is for orthopedic manipulation. So orthopedic manipulation like where you want to put the bone back to the place and it is a painful. alignment There also you can use the succinyl choline. Then when you are doing electroconvulsive therapy. Okay. So elect during the electroconvulsive therapy, you just have to prevent the trauma not convulsions. So to prevent the trauma. Is ko convulsions ke liye use kar rahe hum. So, taki trauma na ho, us case mein, we are giving the skeletal muscle relaxant succinyl choline. So, this is about the therapeutic uh, uses of the succinyl choline. Now, coming to the adverse effect of the succinyl choline. So, important after the recovery, the person may complain of muscle soreness because this drug it causes what initial fasciculation because of the Persistent depolarization, it leads to twitchings and fasciculation in phase 1 block. That leads to the muscle soreness. So, one of the important side effects, most of the patients, they complain with the muscle soreness. Then, number 2 is a prolonged apnea. So, normally it is not because I told you onset of apnea is not there and duration of action is 
it is uh, 5 to 10 minutes. So, once you are giving this uh, succinylcholine, let us take the another page. So, I told you how it is metabolized. It is metabolized by the pseudocholinesterase in the liver, which is present in the liver and plasma. And at the motor end plate, its action is terminated by the diffusion. Once you give this um, succinylcholine, what it is going to cause? It is going to cause the relaxation of the muscle and the fasciculations or twitchings. What is the order? In which order these fasciculations or twitchings they appear? So, it involves first fasciculation will be seen on chest and abdomen, right? Followed by neck, then limbs, face, trunk, and in the last. respiratory muscle and apnea appear within a minute within one minute okay and it stay there for another two to three minutes so duration of, so all these they are not duration of action is very short so it's not that much distinguished so normal apnea it appears within 1 minute and it will be there for 2 to 3 minutes. Now, prolonged apnea happens in what cases? If the person is having any, suppose person is having any liver disease, what will happen? Metabolism will not Or if the person is having atypical pseudocholinesterase. So, this is a genetic variation. Few individuals, they are instead of having pseudocholinesterase, they are having atypical pseudocholinesterase. Now, because of that, atypical pseudocholinesterase, now succinylcholine, it is not metabolized fast. It will remain for a longer time in the body. So, that leads to prolonged apnea. Now, how we will come to know whether the person is born with the atypical pseudocholinesterase? This can be assessed by dibuchene number. Now, this enzyme pseudocholinesterase, its ability to hydrolyze succinylcholine can be assessed by the dibuchene number. So, dibucane, what is this? It is a local anesthetic. So, normally this pseudocholinesterase, agar person mein pseudocholinesterase hai, then dibucane, it is going to inhibit this by 80 percent and if it is a atypical pseudocholinesterase then dibucane number will be 20 percent. So, you can come to know if it is less than 80 percent that means person is born with the atypical pseudocholinesterase. So, prolonged apnea happens if the person is having liver disease and if the person is born with the atypical pseudocholinesterase in that case is what will happen succinylcholine it is not metabolized it will remain in our body for a longer time that is going to prolong the apnea and what you are supposed to there is no antidote for that so you have to do the ventilation of to the patient now coming to the next one next adverse effect is now because of the fasciculation there is a contraction of the external ocular muscle that leads to rise in intraocular pressure. Then again because of the increased intragastric pressure, person may aspirate the gastric content. Then vagal stimulation leads to sinus bradycardia. Then another important adverse effect is hyperkalemia. This is very very important. Hyperkalemia is because of the 
efflux of the potassium from the cell intracellular efflux of the potassium in a normal individual so it doesn't have any clinical relevance itna zyada nahi lekin agar patient with the burns agar burns wala aa jata hai uremia wala patient aa jata hai theek hai so ya aapka spinal injury wala patient aa jata hai in that case so you use some other drug so instead of succinylcholine you you can go for rocuronium agar aapko short term procedure karne so hyperkalemia this is must remember side effect of the succinylcholine you should not forget this hyperkalemia and another important side effect that is a malignant hyperthermia so what is a malignant hyperthermia in malignant hyperthermia there is huge release of this is seen with the succinylcholine along with that there is a halothene succinylcholine and halothene so word malignant itself says what malignant means very high high rise in temperature will be there and it is not something wrong with the thermostat it is autosomal dominant and here there is huge release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum अनस्टेबल ब्लड प्रेशर होता है पेशेंट का एंड दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट शॉर्ट नोट ये अलग से भी पूछते हैं शॉर्ट नोट सो यू मस्ट नो वट इज मैलिग्नेंट हाइपरथर्मिया कौन सी ड्रग से देती है वट इज द कॉज लाइक देर इज अ रिलीज ऑफ द कैल्शियम फ्रॉम द सार्कोप्लाजमी रेटिकुलम एंड वट इज द ट्रीटमेंट फॉर दिस ट्रीटमेंट हेयर इट इज अ डेंट्रोलिन डायरेक्ट एक्टिंग स्कल्टर मसल रिलैक्स एंड इट इज गोइंग टू कॉज द मूवमेंट ऑफ द कैल्शियम फ्रॉम आउट साइड टू द sarcoplasmic reticulum so that's all about the adverse effect so in today's video briefly i have given you introduction then mechanism of action where we use it and adverse effect of the succinyl choline that's all